This is the finished base version of Chump. It can run the code I proposed in the first part of this project, as well as the example code provided by Ben Feinberg, who designed the original version of the project. This video will be a complete summary of all of Chump's systems and how they interact, although components that have already had parts dedicated to them will be covered in less detail. Every CPU functions on a three-stage cycle called the fetch decode execute cycle. Instructions are fetched from memory, decoded by the CPU's control logic, and executed by the ALU. This normally happens in multiple clock ticks, the exact number depending on how much has to be fetched and where the data needs to go. In Chump, the simple instruction set means that all of this happens in one clock tick, and the next instruction is fetched and decoded while the current one is executed. This method of multiple instructions being in the system at the same time but at different stages is called pipelining, and ensures that all parts of a CPU are busy with something at all times. Chump instructions begin at the program EEPROM, where the 4-bit opcode is sent to the control EEPROM and the 4-bit constant to the multiplexer. The control EEPROM is where the opcode is interpreted into control codes to enable and disable different things around Chump. This is how a CPU knows what each instruction means. In Chump there are a total of 10 control codes, each 1 bit, but the control EEPROM can only hold 8 bits for each opcode. This means that the extra 2 will have to come from a different source instead. The constant is sent to the multiplexer, a component that takes two inputs of the same width, in this case four bits, and decides on one to be sent through based on a select bit. This is where the first decision is made by the control codes. Should the constant from the instruction be sent through, or a value from RAM? This decision is one of the two that does not need to come through the control EEPROM, because the instruction set of chomp alternates constant RAM, constant RAM, constant RAM. This means that the low bit of the opcode can simply be used to make this decision. Whichever nibble of data makes it through the multiplexer finds itself on Chump's main data bus. A bus is an extremely useful tool used in CPU design and other systems that need to transfer data, such as SPI communication. A bus is simply a multi-bit data pathway that has many different sources and destinations connected to it. Any source-destination combination can be selected without affecting the rest of the components on the bus. There can only be one component sending data onto the bus at one time, but many can take data off the bus if needed. The program EEPROM and RAM output are the sources of data for Chump's bus, and the multiplexer decides which one is used at any given time. The data on the bus goes to three places, the program counter, whose control code comes from the AND of the high two opcode bits, saving the other of the extra two control codes, the address register, and the ALU, where some operation decided by the control codes is performed on it and the currently held accumulator value before passing it to the input of the accumulator. Which of these components can intake the data is decided by the control codes, however none of them can intake the data yet. Everything up until this point has happened within a split second after the previous clock tick. This is the fetch and decode stage of instruction number one. Then the clock ticks, and instruction number one comes off the data bus and into its selected components, and instruction two's control codes and data come into the fetch and decode phase. This is the pipelining effect in practice. Instruction 2 is in the fetch and decode stage, while instruction 1 is in the execute phase. In the execute phase, any of the three de destinations take in the data, as well as RAM either intaking new data from the accumulator or outputting a value into the multiplexer depending on a control code, which can be used for the instruction that is now in its fetch and decode stage, that's instruction 2. To understand this better, we can follow Feinberg's example code instruction by instruction. On clock tick 0, the instruction read2 is fetched and decoded, putting a 2 on the data bus and preparing the RAM to be in read mode in the execute phase. The ALU performs an operation, but it doesn't matter as the accumulator is disabled. On clock tick 1, the address register intakes the 2, and the value stored in RAM address 2 is outputted to the multiplexer. At the same time, a load it instruction is fetched and decoded, putting this RAM value onto the data bus. This also sets the ALU operation to F equals B, the accumulator enabled, and primes the RAM for another read. On clock tick 3, the accumulator intakes the data bus value, unchanged by the ALU, and the RAM outputs the value at the address corresponding to the value that just came off the data bus. This means that almost every instruction is technically a read instruction, but read is included in the instruction set as the others do something in addition to the read. A new instruction also shows up, add 1. It puts 1 on the data bus and adds it to the accumulator's output, sending this new value to the accumulator's input. 
tick accumulator writes to ram address 2 and a go to 0 comes down the pipeline a 0 is put on the data bus and the alu is set to a logic 1 operation ensuring that its a equals b pin is on this a equals b pin is nanded with a control code that means the p the program counter is seeing a low signal on the load pin and is able to load in this case, it will load unconditionally, but the involvement of the A equals B pin means that conditional instructions such as if0 are a possibility, using different ALU functions to decide what exactly that condition is. Tick, the PC intakes the 0, jumping the program EEPROM back to address 0. The read 2 comes down the pipeline, and the program loops. Here's Chump running the program I proposed at the start of this project, which loads a 1, multiplies by 2 repeatedly until the accumulator holds an 8, then loads a 1 again. Although Chump is a simple machine, it's Turing complete, meaning that given enough time and instructions, it can theoretically run any program that any other computer can.